Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hi, everybody. Good Welcome. Evening. I can hear you. Okay, great. Excellent. Happy to hear that. All right, everybody, welcome once again. This is, um, I'm going to share the screen with you right now. So there it is. Okay. So uh, please take a look. This is, uh, I'm going to also go through the attendance list very quickly. When you hear your name, please let me know. Okay, so Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. I'm here. Welcome. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher president. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Uh, I see she's online. Okay. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Boris Martin. Sorry, I'm here. Okay, Janira, so welcome. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla. Present teacher. Welcome. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Present teacher. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. I will ask you to stop writing on the screen, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Living in person, teacher. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Good evening, sir. Present. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Good evening, teacher. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, I'm here. Good evening. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. Here, good evening. Hello. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Hello. Uh, Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza. Isabel Méndez Aguirre, Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Present. Welcome. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. No. Present teacher. Hello, welcome. No. Uh, Rosa Esmeralda Uy. Hernández de Flores. Rosa. Present teacher. Muy Welcome. Bien. Good evening. Rosino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Welcome. Okay, let's begin. All right, this is Advanced English 3, everybody. And that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service. Once again, this is session 15. And today is November the 22nd of 2023. Okay, remember that these are the, this is the last week 
okay we finish the course tomorrow so um there are four chat entries here <laughs> all right there are four chat entries here let's see okay all right um let's start we have the travel tips that we were reading yesterday alejandro says good evening good evening alejandro taking your attendance here thank you so uh read these people's experiences and the experts advice all right can you think of any other advice uh terry's uh, travel tips okay our travel expert terry tripper response to some troubled travelers okay so we're going to just i'm just going to go through it a second time we read it yesterday so um it's going to be like very quick uh please if if you're not participating make sure your microphones are muted okay please all right so a woman fell down in front of us during our sightseeing tour while we were helping her someone stole our money if we hadn't been so nice, we would still have our cash. That's Margaret from Boston. Okay, and Terry says, I'm not nearly as nice as you. If there is a commotion, I hold on to my wallet. And remember, sometimes the person creating the commotion is working together with the thief. Okay, and that is true. I've been a victim myself. I want to share a tip my friend gave me. If you're worried about losing your passport, don't carry it around with you. Just keep it in your hotel room. That was Sergio from Rio de Janeiro. Terry says, sorry, your friend was wrong. Keep your passport with you at all times. If someone had broken into your room, you will probably still be trying to get home. So about the next one, the last one. King from Vancouver says, help. I didn't arrange anything in advance and now I'm in London in high season and the only hotel rooms we can find are way too expensive. And Terry says, try a travel website. And in the future, plan before you go. If you had done some research at home, you wouldn't be having such a bad vacation now. So that's the introduction to this grammar topic. And that topic is mixed conditionals. Okay, I want you to take a good look at this because this pretty much combines everything you have studied about conditionals. There's a zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional. And the third conditional, it all gets together, and I'm going to explain how it works. Okay, but but it's kind of a lot of information, so I want you to pay close attention to it. So there's a lesson objective. By the end of this section, participants will be able to understand and use mixed conditionals. That's a section 4.4, lesson objective, right there. So <clears throat> um, take a look at this mixed conditionals. Okay. How does that work? Okay, first, we're just going to go through the easiest part of it, which is normally mixed conditionals is a combination of second and third conditional. Okay, now, before that, just take a look at this. First of all, we have second conditional. Okay, very quickly, second conditional. You know, the second conditional has like the if clause and a main clause. Okay, in the if clause, normally you have to use past, okay, a past form, like past simple or past continuous. Okay, and in the main clause, you have to use would plus the verb. Sorry. Would plus the verb. Okay, so how does that work? There's an example. You say, if... I have, say for example, I'm sorry, I know this is very cliche, but okay, if I had a million dollars, which is probably the same example that everybody uses, comma, okay, I would buy um, a really big house, okay? So there's this, that's the second conditional. If I had a million dollars, I will buy a really big house. Now, the second conditional is called present real conditional. Why is that? 
because when you say if I had a million dollars, you're talking about an imaginary condition, a hypothetical condition in the present. It's not about the future. It's not about the past. It's about the present. So if I had a million dollars now in the present, okay, I will buy a really big house. But the reality is I don't have a million dollars. Therefore, I cannot buy a really big house. Okay, only a small one. So that's, again, it's it's called present. Sorry, I said real. It's present unreal conditional. I, I made a mistake right there. So there's present unreal conditional. Again, it's present, okay, because it's, it's a hypothetical condition in the present. It's unreal because it's hypothetical, okay? And it's a conditional because it's a conditional sentence. So that will be the second conditional. Then we have the third conditional, okay? Now, what about the third conditional? This one is called uh, past unreal conditional for similar reasons. It's called past unreal conditional because it's a condition or in a, a situation in the past. It's unreal because it's imaginary. It's only hypothetical. So again, the third conditional, just like the second conditional, has an if clause, okay, and a main clause. And in the if clause, as we have studied, you use past perfect, okay? And in the main clause, you use would have clause a verb in past participle, okay? So let's have this like example situation. I can say, I played the lottery I didn't win. I didn't win. So I played the lottery. I didn't win. So what do we have here? I can say, if I had won the lottery, comma, and this is past perfect. If I had won the lottery, okay, I would have bought, okay, a really big house. Si yo hubiera ganado la lotería, me habría comprado una casa muy grande. Okay, so this is a hypothetical situation in the past. Okay? It's a hypothetical situation in the past. Now, this is the thing. I want you to understand the difference in, say, structure between the second conditional and the third conditional. Okay? The second conditional, again, it's called present unreal conditional it's in the present because the situation is now if i had a million dollars now it's unreal because it's 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 not it's not real it's hypothetical it's imaginary you say if i had in other words i don't have it and the third conditional is called past unreal conditional why is it past because the situation is not in the present it's in the past you say if i had won not today if i had won si yo hubiera ganado that's in the past if i had won the lottery it's unreal because, again, it's not a real situation. It's only imaginary. I didn't win. So if I had won the lottery, right, I would have bought a really big house. So that's pretty much the structure in second conditional and third conditional. Now, what about what we're going to study today? It's mixed conditionals. Now, take a look at this. You use had or hadn't plus the past participle and would, wouldn't to talk about hypothetical events in the past that have effects on the present. Yes, Filomena, Ana Filomena. Uh, can you send? Oh, yes. This? <laughs> yes. Sure. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. All right. Sending it right now. Okay. So you use had or hadn't plus the past plus the past participle and wouldn't wouldn't to talk about hypothetical events in the past that have effects on the present. Okay. Now, what's the thing here? You can talk about something or a situation, a condition in the past that has an effect, a hypothetical result in the present. That is a combination of the third and the second conditional. Like this, 
if we hadn't been so nice, we will still we will still have our cash. Now, this is a situation in the past, but the hypothetical result is not in the past, it's in the present. Second example, if someone had broken into your room, comma, you will probably still be trying to get home. So again, you have a hypothetical situation in the past with an imaginary result in the present. Let's take a look at this. Let's combine, I'm going to go full screen here because it's, let's combine these two sentences here. Well, the first one is, if I had a million dollars, I will buy a really big house. Second conditional. Third conditional, if I had won the lottery, I would have bought a really big house. But I didn't win the lottery, so I didn't buy the house. That was probably years ago. But what about this? What if we could combine the two sentences into one? And you said, this will be a mixed conditional, okay? Which is a combination of third and second conditionals. We have a chat entry here. Cesar, hello Cesar. Okay. All right, so what if I could say, imagine this, you begin talking about a situation in the past that didn't happen. So we have to use past perfect. Let's begin. If I had won the lottery, comma. So basically we are using this, we're using past perfect, okay? But what about a hypothetical result in the present? You will have to use would and verb. I would live in a very big house. I don't know if you're following me. You say, if I had won the lottery, in other words, I played, but I didn't win. If I had won, now I would live in a very big house. So it's an, a hypothetical situation in the past with an imaginary result in the present. Or you can say, if I had won the lottery here, I had won the lottery, comma, I will be rich in the present, right? Or I would be very happy. I don't know, something like that. You say money doesn't buy happiness, but it kind of does. <laughs> okay, so um, that's, that's the explanation on mixed conditionals. Basically, you can have a hypothetical condition in the past with a hypothetical or imaginary result in the present. So when that's the case, you will have to use past perfect in the condition, in the if clause, right? You have to use past perfect. And in the main clause, you will have to use would and a verb because the result is in the present, okay? It will not be would have plus a past participle. No, because that's a hypothetical result in the past. If you're talking about a hypothetical result in the present, then you have to use would and the verb. Okay, so it could be would and uh, and and the verb, or you can say would be and the verb in ing if it's a, a continuous form. Also, that can happen. Before we continue, I don't know if you have any questions about this. This is just an introduction, right? There are several exercises that we need to complete in order to you know uh, get this better. Jose Raving. Teacher, in that, in that. Example, well, in this structure, do we have to use always would or there's another word? You can also use could. Okay, for example, if I had taken swimming lessons, okay, I could swim <laughs> in, the, in now, right? Si hubiera tomado clases de natación, podría nadar. You can say that, right? But the thing is, I didn't take the swimming lesson, so now in the present, I can't swim. You can okay. also use Thank could. You. Mm -hmm. The thing with could is that uh, basically it's it's a combination. In this case, when you're talking about conditionals, is the combination of the model can plus the model would, or more like would plus the model can actually. But because you cannot combine two model auxiliary verbs, you use could. 
Okay, so the word the combination would can is impossible, but you can use could instead. I could swim. I podría nadar. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thanks for your question, by the way. Any other questions uh, you might have about the mixed conditional form? Probably not. Okay, you have already done all the exercises. So um, let's go through the exercises here. Complete these sentences with the correct form of the verbs in parentheses. So the first one is an example. If I had been, okay, you're using the verb be, if I had been more adventurous when I was younger, comma, I wouldn't have any regrets about the things I missed. So pay close attention. When this person says, if I had been, this is about the past. Si yo hubiera sido, that means this person was not adventurous enough. Okay, so if I had been more adventurous when I was younger, right now, okay, I wouldn't have any regrets about the things I missed. So hypothetical condition in the past with an imaginary result in the present. Okay, mixed conditional. That's what it is. What about number two? I need a volunteer to help me with this one. Basically, this exercise is the same uh, that you have in the platform. It's um, section 4.6. So uh, if you help me with this, Debbie Segura is going to help us. And the number two, right? Yes. Okay. The airline lost my luggage. If I have brought a change of clothes in my carry-on, but I would I wouldn't shop for new clothes now. Okay, that's good, but in the second case, it's probably more appropriate yeah. to it's more appropriate to be using in this case a continuous form. I wouldn't remember wouldn't that? have. No, that will be a perfect shop. form. Uh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. Wouldn't we we'll have? Mm. Continue, sir. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, let's take a look. If I had brought a change of clothes in my car on my in my carry on bag, I not shop for new clothes right now. So it sounds like an activity that this person is doing. This person is at a, 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 a clothing store, okay, right now looking for clothes. So what will be something more appropriate? Jose wants to participate, but uh, he participated just a moment ago. Okay, uh, I'm going to give it a chance to to Boris and then Jenny and then Jose. So Boris, what about this one? Well, teacher, I think that is um, I would have shopping. Uh, have shopping is not a real combination. You you don't use have plus a verb in ing, but there is another auxiliary verb that you use with a verb in ing for continuous forms. So. Uh, maybe Jenny knows the answer? Yes, uh, wouldn't be shopping. I wouldn't be shopping. Yes, that's more like it. Okay. No estaría comprando, dice. Ropa en este momento. So, if if I had brought a change of clothes in my carry-on bag, I wouldn't be shopping for new clothes right now. Okay. Si hubiera traído un cambio de ropa, verdad, en mi maleta de mano, no estaría comprando ropa en este momento. Right, so that's that's the thing, right? It's something that this person didn't do, that has some repercussions in the present or an effect in the present. So, that's the thing. When you're talking about, and I'm going to show you the screen again, okay? When you're talking about uh, <clears throat> the result in the present, so if I have brought a change of clothes, blah 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 comma, okay, I wouldn't be shopping for clothes now, okay? It can be a continuous form. You can say, remember that the present continuous is the verb be and the verb in ing, right? But because we have a modal auxiliary and there is a rule that says that after a modal auxiliary, you can only use the base form of the verb, you say be, wouldn't be shopping. It's, it's possible to use a continuous form, okay? If it is something general, you have to use the simple form. That means only the would and the verb in base form. But if it is a continuous form, you have to use would or wouldn't if it's negative, plus be like that, be, and after that, a verb in ing. 
So uh, yeah, that that is correct. Everybody, thank you for participating, Debbie, uh, Boris, and Jenny. Okay, what about uh, number? Th this is a good thing about participating. Even if we don't get the correct answer, we learn in the process. Okay. Like together we get to the right answer and that's an important thing. That's why I always try to encourage everybody to participate. Even if you don't have the right answer, it doesn't really matter. The thing is you are participating, you're speaking English and 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 you're learning at the same time. But if you don't participate, it's like maybe you have a mistake, but we will never have an opportunity to correct that mistake because I don't know what the mistake is if you don't participate, okay? So what about number three? This flight is so long, okay? Several hours on the aircraft. Biden. Okay, this flight is so long. If I hadn't bought an economy class ticket. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't bought an okay. economy class ticket. I would be more comfortable now. I would be more comfortable now. That is correct. This flight is so long. So at, at certain point in the past, this person said like, okay, so it's like first class or economy class. E, okay, first class sounds great, but it's expensive. What about economy class? Okay, that, that's better. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy the economy class. Okay, so the person bought the economy class ticket. And uh and after that, okay, this person regretted it because apparently the flight is like super, super long and uh, the flying conditions are not the best, okay? Probably he's or she's sharing space with a lot of people at the same time and people are making noise and probably there are kids kicking the back of the seat, et cetera, et cetera. So he says, this flight is so long. If I hadn't bought an economy class ticket, hypothetical condition in the past, I would be more comfortable now, okay? Imaginary result in the present, okay? Mixed conditional. Thank you, Byron. Number four, who wants to try? Maritza. Okay. Um, if, if you had learned to speak some Mandarin before, to Taipei, Taipei. Mm -hmm. Taipei, you would be able to ask someone for a direction now. Correct. Very good. So if you had learned to speak some Mandarin before moving to Taipei, you would be able to ask someone for directions now. Maybe somebody told this person, hey, are you going to Taipei in Taiwan? Yes. Okay. You should probably learn a little bit of Chinese, like say hello, please. Right, you know, simple things. And the person probably said, nah, okay. So now there's a problem. If you had learned, that means the person didn't learn. If you had learned to speak some Mandarin before moving to Taipei, you would be able to ask someone for directions now, but you didn't want to learn, so you can't do it, okay? Now it's problematic. Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you, Maritza. What about number five? You need a volunteer for this. Who wants to try? Jenny Elizabeth. Okay. If this master hadn't become a flight attendant, she probably wouldn't travel as much as she does. Yes. If Marta hadn't become a flight attendant, she probably wouldn't travel as much as she does, okay? Now we use the simple form because this is a habitual activity. So yeah, absolutely correct. Thank you very much. Marta, again, hadn't become a flight attendant. Si ella no se hubiera vuelto una uh, aeromosa, right? Okay, she wouldn't travel as much as she does. So ella no viajaría tanto como, como lo hace ahora. Okay, so that's that's the idea. So those are mixed conditionals. In, in its simplest form, normally a mixed conditional is a combination of the second and third conditional. It's like usually the condition is like third conditional and the result is like second conditional. So that is the thing. There is a little bit more, okay, actually on this before we finish. Give me a second. Hmm. Okay. All right, so mixed conditionals. I'm going to send you this information because it's not 
in the manual and it's definitely not in the platform. So this is also new. Now take a look, mixed conditionals. Now conditionals can appear in many forms. They can describe how situations in the past affect situations in the past, in the present, or even in the future. Okay, now take a good look. So use a past tense in both the if clause and the result clause to talk about true events in the past. Now, everybody take a good look, right? If clause, past simple, main clause, past simple. This is a different type of conditional. So you use a past tense in the in both the if clause and the result clause to talk about true events in the past, like this. When I was younger, if I didn't behave well, my parents were disappointed. Now, this is not a hypothetical situation. This is a real situation, but in the past. Si no me portaba bien, mis papás se decepcionaban. Okay, so if I didn't behave well, my parents were disappointed. Again, it's past simple, but it's not about a hypothetical situation in the present. It's a real situation in the past. That will be like a past real conditional. Second example, if we got lost during our trip, sorry, if we got lost during our trip last year, we just uh, ask someone for directions. O sea, si nos perdíamos en el, en el viaje del año pasado, solo le preguntamos a alguien por dónde era. So we just ask someone for directions. So that means that this happened to these, to these people more than once. And every time they had to do the same. They said, oh my God, we got lost. What do we do now? Just ask this person right here, okay? Let's ask for directions. So it, it happened to these people a number of times. Okay, during their trip. Uh, we don't know where, but during the trip that they had. So that's uh, that's an alternative form of conditional that we have here. It's a past real conditional. So if that's the case, you use past simple in the main and the if clause, and you use past simple in the main clause also. Okay. The second one, we use had or hadn't and would plus wouldn't plus the present perfect to talk about hypothetical situations in the past that had effects on more recent past. For example, if I had been born with a good voice, that means I wasn't born with a good voice, I would have started my own band a long time ago. So it's a hypothetical situation in the past with a hypothetical result in the past. This is purely third conditional that we have studied. Again, if I had been born with a good voice, I would have started my own band a long time ago. Si hubiera nacido con buena voz, habría, habría empezado o fundado mi banda hace mucho tiempo. So, hypothetical result, uh, situation in the past or condition in the past with a hypothetical result in the past also. Now we use had or hadn't plus a past participle and would, wouldn't plus a verb to describe hypothetical situations in the past that have effects on the present. This is the mixed conditional that we just talked about. If I had studied harder when I was in school, I would have a better job today. So again, if I had studied harder when I was in school, that is a hypothetical situation in the past. And then I would have a better job today is a hypothetical result in the present. Mixed conditional. This is exactly what we just completed a few minutes ago. And the last one, if we had or sorry. I'm reading the example. So uh, use had or hadn't plus the past participle and would, wouldn't plus a verb to talk to talk about hypothetical situations in the past that have effects on the future. It is also possible. Like this. If she, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. If she had booked, si hubiera reservado, if she had booked her flight before now, she would be in Paris next week. It is possible to have like some sort of result in the future. She will be in Paris next week. And if I hadn't taken a year off from school, I will be graduating this June. ¿verdad? Si no me hubiera tomado un año sabático, ¿verdad? De mis estudios, me estaría graduando ya en junio. Pero no. Okay. So if I had taken, if I hadn't taken a year off from school, 
I will be graduating in June. So it, it is possible to express a hypothetical result also in the future. This is less common, but it can happen, all right? So that's 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 a lot of information and conditionals, okay? I, I shared this information with you via WhatsApp so you can have it. And right now we're going to do an exercise that is not in the platform and is not in the manual. So uh, it's, it's, it's a totally new exercise we're going to do. Just I just want to make sure that you understand the uses of uh, the mixed conditionals. After that, we're going to do uh, section 4.7. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do this. Okay, complete these sentences with the correct form of the verbs in parentheses. Okay, there are 10 situations. We're going to uh, just solve the first one and then I'm going to give you some minutes for you to, well, we're going to solve number one and number two, okay? And then I'm going to give you some minutes for you to do the rest. So the first one goes like this. As a kid, I always, blah, blah, blah. And then you have enjoy, school if I, blah, blah, blah. Then you have the verb like the teacher. So this is a uh, situation in which you have to use past simple in both clauses. You have as a kid, I always enjoyed school if I liked the teacher. Cuando era niño, siempre disfrutaba la escuela. Sí, me caía bien el maestro. Okay, so it's 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 not a hypothetical situation. It's a real situation, but in the past. Okay, it's a past real conditional. So what about the second one? You have, if I, blah, 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 study harder last year, okay, now we're talking about the last year, I, blah, 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 not have to repeat this course this year. So hypothetical situation in the past or condition in the past with an imaginary result in the present. This is a mixed conditional. So you go like this, if I had studied harder last year, I wouldn't, sorry. Yeah, sorry, a word is missing here. Let me correct this. There's very little space, but okay. I think I'm going to reduce. Just give me a second. Too much. Okay, better. All right, so uh, if I had studied harder last year, I wouldn't have had to repeat the course this year. Si hubiera estudiado con más ganas el año pasado, no habría tenido o no tendría que repetir el curso este año. Okay. So that's the thing, third conditional, uh, sorry, mixed conditional right there. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to give you how many minutes? I'm going to give you eight minutes, okay? Eight minutes for you to go through the rest from number three to number 10. Uh, remember to check the information that just sent you via WhatsApp. Uh, have it as reference to solve this exercise. I'm going to give you eight minutes, okay? Everybody, please uh, work on these. Remember, they are mixed conditional. Sometimes you have to use past simple in both. Sometimes you use a past simple and multiple as a verb and all those combinations. So be very careful when you do it. Just try to analyze what kind of uh, situation it is, it is, right? If it is in the present, if it is hypothetical or not, if it is in the past, if it has uh, some sort of effect in the past or in the present, you have to consider all those things, okay, to do this exercise. It's 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 quite a complex exercise, but okay, we're gonna try to do it together. So, eight minutes, okay, and I'll be checking answers in uh, w when the time is up. Let's begin.
Time's up. Let's check answers. Okay, so again, the first one is as a kid, if I I always enjoyed school if I liked the teacher. Number two, if I had studied harder last year, I wouldn't have had to repeat the course this year. Okay. So what about number three? Who wants to try? Let's give it a try. Maritza, thank you. I try to chair. No problem. That's the idea. Um, if he hadn't spoken, great. He we're, 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 to... we're talking. We're talking about. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're talking about the ability to speak a language. So, this person can speak Greek. It's a little bit different. Okay. So, um, do we have a second uh, second try, or or does anybody want to help? I know that this exercise is. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Let's see what, what Boris has to say. Thank you, Maritza. I know that this exercise is challenging. It's basically a combination of all forms of conditional. So, Boris. I'm going to try it, sure. Sure. If he couldn't... Uh, spoken or speak? I don't know. Speak. Uh, could is a modal auxiliary verb. Therefore, you always have to use the base form of the verb after that. Okay. If he couldn't speak Greek in his trip to Athena last year, uh, it, it hadn't been so enjoyable. Hadn't been, uh, you remember that in the result you have to use wood. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So? It would have been. So Let's see. Um, let me just let me check one thing here. By the way, I believe there's a mistake in here because um, I I believe that this one should be negative because if it is affirmative, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, let's let's go for it. If he didn't speak Greek, his trip to Athens last year wouldn't have been so enjoyable. So, si él no hablara griego, su viaje a Atenas del año pasado no habría sido tan placentero, right? That's the thing. Okay, okay no thank habría, you. No se habría podido comunicar. Okay, thank you, Boris. Thank you for participating. But I believe there's a mistake in here because it... it it marks the verb B as affirmative, but it, it, it doesn't really make sense if you use it in affirmative form. It have to be done in negative form. So um, everybody, thank you for participating. Okay, um, what about number four? Number four is a little bit easier. It's about a general situation in the past. So, oh, Byron? Ah, okay. When I was young, if I had seen a saw a scary movie. Wait a second, so which one is it? If I? <laughs> If I had saw a scary movie. Mm, I, sorry, but that combination is not possible. Uh, I did see it, so. Mm, no, sorry. Uh, only one word. It's only one word. If I saw a scary movie, I would have bad dreams. Okay, but we're talking about, okay, that's better, but we're talking about a situation that was generally true in the past. So uh, let's see what Cecilia has to say about it. When, when I was young, if I saw a scary movie, I... Cecilia? I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. Mm, I would no. have. I would have. I would have had bad dreams. Not exactly. Okay, not exactly. This is actually similar to number one. It's uh, a, a, 
a real situation or real condition in the past and the same general result in the past, okay, which is also real. Let's see what, or let's hear what Debbie Segura has to say. Is, uh, I would have had. I would have had. Bad dreams. Mm, but no. that sounds like a hypothetical result in the past and that's not the case. It's a general result. Let, let's see, let's hear what Maritza has to say. Okay. Uh, is only yeah. had. Only had. Yeah, that's right. When I was young, if I saw a scary movie, I had bad dreams. When I was pequeño, verdad? Si veía una película de terror, me daba pesadillas. Okay, so I had bad dreams. I did this. This happened. Okay, as a general rule. Okay, so that that will be. Uh, if we go back, that will be the first case right here. Sorry. We use a past tense in both the if clause and the result clause to talk about true events in the past. When I was younger, if I didn't behave well, my parents were disappointed. If we got lost during the trip last year, we just asked someone for directions. Okay, so what about uh, number five? Don't worry so much if you're not getting the right answers right now, because I know this is challenging. Okay, it's a combination of everything. So uh, let's, let's hurry. We don't have much time. So what about number five? This is also very similar to number four and number one. So, uh, Debbie, do you want to participate? Your hand is up. Oh, no, she forgot to put it down. So uh, what about number five? It's same situation as number one and number four. Uh, Ms. Romero, what, what, um, what's, 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 what's with you these Hello? days, Ms. Romero? You're not participating this too much. <laughs> You used to you used to talk a lot more, but these days you're like just you yeah, know, watching. Yeah, that's true. I'm okay. sorry about that. Okay, what about I'd number be, five? Uh -huh. I'd be more like a listener in the class because I had been mm -hmm. Next some other stuff from the university, but mm -hmm. I'm here. Okay, I get it. All yeah. right, let's let's do this. Number five. So when I was a kid, if my father went away on a business trip. He always called at eight to say good night to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so it's a, a situation in the past that was generally true. When I was a kid, if my father went away on the business trip, he always called at eight to say good night to us. Thank you, Ms. Romero. That is correct. We have a chat entry here. Uh, just a second. All right. So um, what about number six? What about number six? Maritza. Number six, if I had spent Yes. Less money when I was younger, I would um, have how? I would. I could. I, I would. How? What did you just tell me before? I would. I would have how? I would have had, right? A nice little nest a egg nice in a few years. In a few years. What is a nest egg? It's a it's a sum of money that you manage to save. Okay, that's it's an idiomatic expression. Okay, so if you have a little nest egg, that means that you have some money saved. So if I had spent less money when I was younger, I would have had a little nice egg in a few years, but I spent a lot of money, therefore I couldn't save any. Okay, so thank you, Maritza. What about number seven? What about number seven? Gladys. No Gladys? If I wouldn't have had fight with my friend yesterday. The thing is, in remember that you don't use would in the if clause. Would is for the main clause, is the other one. Oh mm -hmm. I I I say wouldn't. Uh-huh. Or that's what I heard. I wouldn't have had. But again, yeah. but again, uh, you don't use will in the if clause. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a if bit different. I, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. If I? If I hadn't have? That is correct. If I hadn't had a fight with my friend yesterday, I... I hadn't went. Mm, no, Ooh. this is this is the 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 result clause. Now this time you have to use would. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't went to the party tonight. Mm, well, uh, not exactly. We we need a little help right here. But thank you, uh, yeah. Gladys. Okay. <laughs> what about uh, the second part, number seven? Who wants to try? Okay, uh, Byron and then Maritza. Okay, Byron? Okay. I would have went to the party tonight. I would have went is not possible because uh, went is the past form of the verb, not the past participle. Mm. And maybe it's gone. I would have gone to the party tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, this, this can be interpreted in two ways. I have it. I think I'm going to include the answer too because it it could be used. This is going to I would have gone. You said okay. All right. So what do we have here? It's if I hadn't had a fight with my friend yesterday. What I have is I would go to the party tonight. So si no hubiera peleado, no hubiera tenido una pelea con mi amigo ayer, iría a la fiesta. O sea, no voy a ir porque estoy peleado con él o con ella. But the answer that Byron gave us is also possible, which is, ah, sorry, animations, I forgot. Um, I have to move the order of animations here. Okay. So uh, you can also say, if I hadn't had a fight with my friend yesterday, I would have gone to the party tonight. Okay, si yo no hubiera tenido una pelea con mi amigo ayer, habría ido a la fiesta hoy, de esta noche. Okay, so it sounds like... Uh, it's still the same day. Okay, so because there isn't enough contextual information for us to know exactly what time it is, I guess either answer is plausible, okay, uh, given certain circumstances. But yeah, thank you. Let's do number eight. It's 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 time basically. So let's 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 hurry here. What about number eight? What about number eight? Who wants to try? Ms. Romero, do you want to participate? Or is your hand up only? Okay, Sorry. Let's, <laughs> uh, okay, let's do something because it's time. Okay, so I'm going to send this to you uh, 8, 9, and 10, okay, via WhatsApp. So you can have it and you can solve it in your house, okay? And then tomorrow we're going to uh, check the information first thing when we begin the class. So you have number eight, number nine, number 10, in case you haven't finished, okay, you can solve it in your house. I'm just going to go through the attendance list very quickly here, just to check that everybody's here. Abdiya Viso Peña is here. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla is here. Ana Filomena Mendoza is also here. Um, Ana Yanira Mendoza is also here. Yes, Andrea Michel Garcia Selva is here. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino is here. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla is also here. Cecilia Lisa Guardado is here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez, yes. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez, yes. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos, yes. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez, yes. Gabriela Loure Sequeira, yes. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez, yes. Gladys Imelda Sanchez is here. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana is also here. Jose Rabin Enriquez is also here. Carla Stephanie Perla Mansor is not here. Um, Luis Fernando Enriquez is here. Madeline Diana Ceron de Paz is not online. Uh, Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre is here. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva is here also. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle is here. Reina Isabel Romero is here. 
Rosa Esmeralda Hernández is here. Rufino Mirka Hernández Linares is here. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía is here. Okay, everybody, remember that um, we finish the course tomorrow. Okay, so please, please, please join the meeting. Okay, it's very important for the completion of your uh, participation uh, percentage. So I'll see you tomorrow at 8. We're going to finish the section, and also we're going to go through the final exam, which I know you have done it, but well, we're going to see it anyway. So thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.